Hello, welcome back to another video. I am very excited about today's video because it takes a look back on the year so far. We're just entering July by the time you're watching this and it is fully in the swing of being over halfway now through the year. So I'm a little bit late with this tag, but it is the mid-year book recap tag. I am very excited to be taking part. I can't actually find the creator for this tag. I think so many people have done it that it's just kind of got lost along the way. So I do apologize. I don't know the name of the creator. If you do, please let me know and I will tag them down in the description. I will pop all the questions down in the description as well if you want to give this a go. But I've got a load of books. I'm going to talk to you about them. This is going to be a look back on all the books I've read so far this year. But first up, stats. Yay! So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview using Corpile, which is G from Book Gross rating system. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview as to what I've read this year so far, like within stats, numbers, the types of genres I'm reading, different things like that. So, so far, I have managed to read 70 books this year. My goal was 60 books, so 70. <laughs> Just blew that out the window. I don't know how I've read that many books. I didn't set out to read like that many so fast obviously I put my goal into 60 I didn't want to pressure myself I read just over 100 last year so I feel like I'm heading in that direction as well this year it's almost too many because I feel like it gets to a point where I can't remember exactly what every single book is about but I'm proud of myself <laughs> it's kind of getting that TBR pile down bit by bit so I consider that a win my best reading month by far though was January it normally is I feel motivated in January I read 20 books in January that's a lot. Collectively, over these 70 books, I have read 23,687 pages. That's a lot of pages. <laughs> Most of these books were originally written in English, but I have read four translated fictions this year, which is not as many as I would like to read. I want to read a lot more, but I've been trying to challenge myself to read like one every one to two months, which makes sense with that stat. So the genres, what have I actually been reading? So of all of those books, actually only 19, so that's 27.1%, have been fantasy, 12 have been contemporary, eight have been graphic novels, five horror, five nonfiction, which I'm very proud of myself for, five historical fiction, which isn't a genre I often read a lot of, four thrillers, which I thought I would have read a lot more thrillers, and then the rest are kind of like just one or two. So we've got poetry, mystery, literary fiction, dystopia, and that's that's all the genres listed. So that actually surprises me that I didn't read as much fantasy as I thought I had. I think fantasy is a genre that I read like bigger books of, so it also often feels like it takes me longer to read them, so maybe that's why in my head I thought I had more. But collectively my most popular star rating is four stars. I've given 31 books four stars, I've given 22 books three stars, and I have given nine books five stars, three books two stars. <laughs> haven't given any books one stars because I tend to DNF at that point. I've actually read more adult books than I have young adult this year, so I've read 39 adult books and 29 young adult and only two middle grades, so I clearly need some more middle grade recs. Also 91% of my reads were first time reads and I have read six rereads, which I I can only remember one being a reread. Two. Two in my head are rereads. I can't remember what the other ones are that are rereads, but hey, go me. And I've also got a near 50 50 split with reading series versus standalone. 34 standalone, 36 books are part of a series. I'm trying to finish series gradually and I really haven't done that very much. So that's a breakdown of my stats. Shall we jump into the questions? The first question is the best book you've read so far in 2021. So I have actually picked two books for this prompt because I couldn't choose between them. I loved both of these and I also for some reason thought I read one of these at the end of 2020, not at the start of 2021. So I'm, I want to include it because I'm excited that I read it this year. <laughs> so one of those and the one that I just mentioned is Wonderland by Juno Dawson. I adored this. This is an Alice in Wonderland retelling set in modern day. Wonderland is a party and Alice is trying to find her friend Bunny who she thinks has got caught up in some dangerous stuff and she doesn't know what's happened to her. I loved this. It's a very short book, yet it explores so, so many important topics. It talks about drug use, it talks about gender, it talks about sexuality, it talks about consent. There are so many important things talked about in this book and I just thought it was done in such a powerful way. I couldn't put it down absolutely bloody loved it. This has to be one of the two that I love the most this year. The other one is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This one was a total random buy for me. I just happened to see it and thought that'll fit perfectly for a readathon. 
picked it up outside of the readathon anyway and absolutely adored it. This is a historical and contemporary fiction flitting between two time zones. We see someone in the modern day investigating this apothecary that seemed to be killing men in a certain way and then we see the 18th century where we've got that apothecary and we find out what's actually happening. This is a real feminist novel, it's women supporting women. I love that about this but I also love the element of this mystery linked with the history. It's also based on something that did actually happen I believe. There's so much to love in this book. This one and this one are both top reads for me this year. The best sequel you have read so far in 2021. It has to be Heartstopper Volume 4. I loved this book. It just did so much. I cannot wait for this TV series. Every time I read a Heartstopper book I just think of it as a film or a TV show in my head. It just works so well. Alice Osman has created such amazing characters, such believable real characters that she just, I feel like within her all of her books she represents something for everyone and I just love that about her writing. Heartstopper Volume 4 is the second last book we're getting. I think we only get five volumes and Volume 5 I assume comes out next year. So this was kind of winding towards that end point for me which is very sad but I loved this one. I just, I just love Nick and Charlie, I love all the characters and this one was just the best sequel I've read so far this year. I'm not going to tell you specifically what it's about because if you've not read any of the other ones I don't want to spoil it for you but the whole series is about Nick and Charlie's relationship, their friendships as well, their friends, their school experiences. It's just so good. The next question is a new release that you haven't read yet but really want to and that is a very easy answer for me. That is The Maidens by Alex Michalides. Michalides, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. This is a dark academia -y thriller book that is by the same author that wrote The Silent Patient if you've read that one, which I haven't but I really want to. This one is surrounding a murder as dark academia does tend to go in the direction of. This is dubbed as like a modern secret history I think. The greatest campus novel since The Secret History by Donna Tarr with a climactic twist that you will never see coming. This is investigating a murder, there's a secret society that is run by a professor that's a bit suspicious. I'm very excited for it. This edition has beautiful black spray pages. I think this is going to be my Patreon pick for the next two months. I have got to check the poll because I'm announcing it like later today when I'm filming this. This was one of the four choices that I gave and I think this is the most popular one. So if you are interested in reading along with us there's links down to that below but I am super excited to get to this one. It's going to be one that I read literally within like the next one to two months if it's our Patreon book club pick. So yay! The next question is my most anticipated release for the latter half of 2021. Now I've actually got three answers for this one. One of which I own as an ARC. It arrived last week. I'm reading it as I film this video and I'm so excited because this is one that I have been very ready for. I love this author. I love the world she creates. So I'm going to tell you about this one first. That is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is a companion novel to the Caraval series following Jax. We have a whole new adventure. We have a whole new kingdomy world. We've got special little moments of magic. It's so escapist. The writing is so lyrical and I cannot wait for this one to properly come out and have the beautiful heart back in my hands. But whilst I am reading this at the moment, it doesn't come out until September. So I feel like I can get away with putting it in this video but oh my gosh it's so good, it's so so good. The other two books I am very excited for are sequels, so we've got Kingdom of the Cursed which is the sequel to Kingdom of the Wicked by Kay Maniscalco and we've also got These Violent Ends which is the sequel to Our Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Both of those I am very excited about. Chloe Gong's series is a Romeo and Juliet retelling and I need more because of the way that the last book ended, I just really need more. <laughs> and Kingdom of the Cursed is as I said the sequel to Kingdom of the Wicked which was a very dark princes of hell type of fantasy that I am very excited to see what kind of twists and turns the next book takes. So both of those also super super excited for. Then we've got my biggest disappointment. If you've been watching my channel for a while you will see that this book I read probably like two or three months into the year and just no no didn't like it. It's The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I hated this book this was so bad. I really disliked the relationship between the two characters. It was an enemies to lovers but it just was so not right. It was so creepy, at times stalkery, and just really represented bad morals and judgment when it comes to liking somebody and the kind of relationship that these two formed just was... There's some really weird moments in this book. If you've read it you'll particularly know hopefully a couple that I mean but one that really creeped me out I'll give you the hint of a wallpaper colour or a wall colour. Really creeped me out. Like there's just a lot in this where I'm just like 
no, that's not all right. That is not, no, no. So this one was a massive disappointment, unfortunately. I really hoped I would love it and hoped it would be a fun contemporary that I would read it really fast. And I did read it really fast because I wanted it to end. Normally I would DNF this kind of book, but I kind of just wanted to see if it redeemed itself. It did not. The next question is the biggest surprise. If you have been following my content anywhere for a while, you'll know that I desperately want to like the Bone Season series. I read the first book three times, and on the third time, I finally started to really enjoy it. It is Lauren from Fiction Tea's favorite series, and Lauren's one of my best friends. And when your best friend loves a series that much, you wanna be able to love it too. So I really wanted to love this series, but I just, eh, it was okay. So I read all three of them in preparation for The Mask Falling, and I thought I would just kind of feel like it's okay about The Mask Falling. But this one ends up being my biggest surprise of the year. I ended up really liking this one. I think I gave it four stars. I thought I would find it a lot more daunting and I thought it would take me a lot longer to get through. But I actually read this one in a couple of days. I really enjoyed where the story went. I felt very gripped to find out what was happening with Paige on her journey. And it felt like a really good fourth book in a series. And I'm gonna continue with the series and I'm really excited to do that. So this ends up being my biggest surprise because this was a series that I just wasn't loving as much as I wanted to. And then it completely pulled through for me with The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon. I don't think I've said that. This series is by Samantha Shannon. <laughs> it is the Bone Season series, but this is book four. So again, not gonna tell you what it's about, but it follows Paige Mahoney in a world where you've got uh, people that can do different abilities within the spirit world. So Paige is able to kind of walk into people's dreamscapes and it follows her on this revolution to break down the system. It's very cool, very empowering, very, yes but a lot happens in this book, a lot happens. So this one definitely was my biggest surprise. And also, yes, I still have the cellophane cover on it that my Goldsboro edition came with because I can't bring myself to remove it, which I really should, but hey ho. The next question is newest favorite author. This can be a debut author or a new author to you. So I looked through everything and I was trying to pick an author that I really had felt like I discovered this year. I hadn't really looked at their books before or had any of their books before this year. And there was a couple that came to mind, but one that I absolutely adored the book of is Amy McCaw's Mina and the Undead. Amy writes such a fantastic story here. I love the New Orleans setting. I love the merging of vampires and the kind of cult horror fan-esque of this book and I just think Amy's passion for that topic shines through as well and I just thought it was a great fun time. So I think that Amy deserves this slot because I've looked at all the other authors, they all are books that I have owned for a while or like authors that I've definitely heard a lot about before whereas I think this is Amy's debut book, I think she totally deserves this slot and I really really liked this and I can't wait to see what she writes next. So. This book, fantastic. Amy McCall's writing, brilliant too. And she's just a lovely person. <laughs> the next question I kind of jump over every time I answer these because it is newest fictional crush. I don't really get fictional crushes. I, I just don't, I don't know why, but I don't. So I'm gonna just skip over that and go to the next one. The next question is newest favorite character. Now, again, I thought a lot about this. I had to look through my core pile. I thought about all the amazing characters I've read and I chose a fictional dog and I have no regrets. I have chosen Henry from Heartstopper Volume 4. The little pug. Is he a pug? I think he's a pug. He's so cute, it hurts. His little tongue. He's so cute. I couldn't not. He's a bean. So once again, Alice Osman slides her way into my video but Henry is just so cute and I know I know I could have picked like some really empowering feminist character to talk to you about and that would have been great but a little drawn dog is just it has my heart and as soon as I saw that answer I was like Henry Henry I'm gonna look for other options but Henry and then I was like no I'm just gonna it's Henry Henry's my answer the next question is a book that made you cry and I was gonna show you Heartstopper again like the whole series because I reread the first one and then read two three and four this year as well for the first time but that series definitely did make me cry and there's a lot that I think are moments you can pull out for different people that will make different people cry different moments but a book that I really felt a connection to was Loveless by Alice Osman as well. <laughs> it's a bit of a theme here. Alice Osman writes books that make me cry. I loved this 
book. This follows Georgia who has never been in love and she's going to university, she's going with her two friends and she really wants to discover love but she's also coming to terms with the fact that she thinks she may be on the asexual spectrum. She's discovering words such as asexual and aromantic and she's discovering what they mean with the LGBTQA plus society at her university. So she is getting involved in all of that and trying to find herself and this book for so many reasons resonated something with me and I absolutely loved it and it totally tugged at my heartstrings for so many different reasons. The university setting as well I loved. I loved my time at university very much and reading about it in this book and following Georgia on her journey just was an emotional one so thanks Alice Osman again for making me cry. Now we have a book that made you happy and I really loved this book. This is a little bit of a different type of answer but this just made me really happy. That is Book Love by Debbie Tung. This is a little comic book type thing. It's got little strips of dialogue and illustrations that go along with just being a bibliophile and I just felt like it was such a good representation of what it is like to love books and there were so many relatable moments in this book that you just can't not love it. There are so many parts that I just think oh yeah that's exactly how I feel and it just made me feel very happy. Easily a one sitting read but also easily like a coffee table book you can dive in and out of. It just made me smile because so many of the sections I was like that's so relatable so I had to put it in here for the happiest book I've read this year. <laughs> then the most beautiful book you have bought or read this year. So this one arrived in a fairy loot box. It is absolutely beautiful. I think this was the May fairy loot box or the June, what, what month are we in now? It's the May fairy loot box. It was the last one that I received. It is absolutely beautiful. And that is Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. This is steeped in gold as a book. Absolutely beautiful. What? <laughs> like this is so unusual because the cover has gone down this route of the patterns but then inside we have extended that cover with the patterns as like the uh, naked card cover but we've also got amazing illustrations on the inside of the dust jacket so there is so much art everywhere on this book and it's it's not a difficult choice that this is the most beautiful book I have received this year. Just everything, everything about it is absolutely stunning. The final question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? All of them? <laughs> Like that seems like a really hard question because like every book, I'm not a TBR setter yet. Watch this space. <laughs> Maybe, who knows. But yeah, all of the books. I, I don't really have much in my head that I'm like, I absolutely have to read this. Like there's no obligations for me to have to read any books, but I'm just reading them for fun, having a good time. And I want to read all the books ever, every single book that ever was. Well, not every single book. I mean, some of them aren't really gonna be my thing, but all of the ones that I've got on my shelves that I can possibly get to before the year is out. So that was the mid-year book freak out tag. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the books that I am freaking out over for the mid part of this year. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below what your answers would be or what you thought some of my answers or what you thought some of these books or just what the best book you've read so far this year is. And you can subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. All of those things really, really, really help my channel. I also have a Patreon link down below if you did want any extra content from me. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.